Oh yeah. Ooh, a little spin there. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. That felt pretty good. You put it in the bag. She feels pretty soft off the face. Put it in the bag. The player's distance iron category is becoming more and more popular, and today we have seven of the most popular models from 2022 that we will test head to head on TrackMan. One reminder before we get started, if you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, and you leave a comment and tell us which of these models is your favorite. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing Minnetonka. Today, Thomas, seven irons, uh, the player's distance category. So, uh, you know, not long ago, it was basically game improvement irons and player's irons. Right. And the last several years now, we've kind of seen this category emerge uh, where it's sort of the tweener between game improvement and player's irons. A lot of forgiveness, a lot of distance. Uh, but also enough workability for that player that still wants to see the, a, a certain ball flight, maybe. Yeah, and even that category is now expanded right, even further right, right. as well. So, but these are irons. You know, we're talking about loft, 29 and a half to 31 degrees. So, yeah. they're they're going to be pretty similar with regards to performance because the loft is around, is around about 30 degrees compared to a cavity back or a right. blade. You're going to see a little less spin mm -hmm. or some more spin compared to a game from an iron. Right, right. So, I mean, you're going to see, you know, yeah, it's definitely going to be different than either of those categories. And that's why there was such a need out there for players maybe with that kind of mid to maybe high single digits type in there, that type of uh, player yep. needing something that's the best of both worlds. And I think that's what these irons uh, provide. So seven models we have today. We have TaylorMade P790, Ping i525, Cobra King Forge Tech, the 2022 model. Uh, Shrixon ZX5, Mizuno Pro 225, Titleist T200, and the Callaway Rogue ST Pro. So uh, some of the biggest brands in golf here, and they're all kind of getting in on this category here. So uh, needless to say, it's a big one. Uh, the brands are noticing that a lot of golfers fit here and do like that type of kind of a almost hollow body type iron. Yeah, this has been a very, very popular category, mm -hmm. and these are clubs that have been fitting a lot of customers in. Let's yeah. face it, you know, golfers that are yeah, they're decent at, at the game, yeah. but they just want to find a way to hit the ball a little further, maybe mm -hmm. bring that spin rate down. This is, this is the perfect category for that. For sure. So, golf shafts here, um, and the format of the test, Thomas, let's go over that, and then we'll start hitting some shots here. Yep, so I'm gonna not, not going to quite swing at full speed today. Yeah. I'll probably be in the, in the low to mid 80 mile an hour category, because yeah. um, that's generally what you're kind of going to fit golfers into. Yeah. If you have a very high speed golfer hitting these irons, let's face it, they're going to go far, which is a nice thing, but it's also, <laughs> but it's also not going to be as consistent. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so that Nippon Modus 105S golf shaft. Okay, perfect. Um, so for all the heads, all standard land, all standard lie, um, all their standard lofts that are on their particular irons. Perfect. All right. You ready to hit some shots here? Let's do it. Yeah. Good start. All right, 82 is the the okay. goal. All right. About uh, T200. Already quite some different numbers right after yep. that. This one's flying quite a lot higher and spinning more. Here's the P790. That thing launched so low. Yeah, a little spin there. You got a smash factor 149. Yeah. Yeah. Hit down on it some too. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It actually feels pretty good. You put it in the bag? Yeah, she feels pretty soft off the face. Put it in the bag. Is that going to come back? Yeah, it's still pretty good. Maybe I should be playing the ZX5s. I know which dispersion I want. I want the red one. All right, so Thomas, four clubs in. Um, you got them all in front of you here. Uh, first, just kind of give me what you thought on the look and feel. Uh, I know it's a little bit different than where you're used to, probably some clicky, hollow type feel, but uh, talk to me about that. Yeah, I mean, so you're talking about feel, I guess, to start off with. I, I did notice a P790, yeah. a little clickier off the face yeah. compared to a couple of the others. Um, the Cobra surprised me. I was expecting to be a little clicky, but it was actually a touch softer off the okay. face, which was good. Strixon ZX5 felt pretty, pretty good. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I almost feel like I was playing more of a cavity back yeah. with the feel. And the T200 was... It was kind of loud, but yeah. it was it wasn't like it was super yeah. clicky. I think I think we noticed when we initially tested 
the ZX5 and ZX7, they felt and looked very, very similar. I think the ZX5 is essentially just a larger, slightly larger version yeah. of ZX7. They're not even um, that different in, in the size either. They're pretty right. close. So, well, speaking um, of size, so yeah. I've, I've kind of ranked these these four clubs just kind mm -hmm. of in, in order. So. The smallest of the players just in iron so far that we've hit of these four was T200, looking down at, uh, with regards to club size and top line, anything okay. like that. Um, next was ZX5, so those two are pretty pretty similar with regards to size. And then uh, the P790 and the Forge Tech were just a little bit, a little bit larger. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So not it, like nothing, uh, you know, stark differences. No, right but I mean, you, I, I did notice when I was kind of looking down at, say, the ZX5, it looks smaller overall, but it may be a little longer from heel to toe. Okay. But yeah, they're they're okay. pretty close. But yeah, those those other two were just a little yeah. larger than T two hundred and ZX five. Sure. Yep. Okay. Well, we've got some numbers and dispersion here. We'll quickly go over again. We'll wrap it all up at the end. But I did yep. just want to pick out a couple of things to look for here in the remaining part of the test. Um, club speed's pretty similar, so not a ton of. I guess, I mean, it's a pretty good test in that um, in that aspect. Yep. Um, the only thing I noticed was the height in the spin with T200. So yeah. if, you, if you move all the way over to the right, you look at that landing angle, it was the highest landing angle yep. by about two degrees. By a significant margin. And the then highest peak height, spins a little bit higher than the others. Um, the other thing is that a little bit of a jump with ball speed and efficiency with the Cobra. Um, I, I believe that's the lowest lofted iron of them, so that might be the reason for that. Yep. Um, um, and P790. Uh, yep. we, you know, it's it's a rocket. It doesn't mm -hmm. spin a lot, and you can see that there too. Forty-one sixty-seven. Yep. And uh, on the spin. As of now, the longest total distance and carry distance fractionally, right? But the yep. longest distance. Um, we've seen that time and again when we test in this category P seven ninety. It is not the lowest lofted, but it's the most explosive every time, and it seems to just have a little bit extra juice to get out there further than its competitors. Yep. That's exactly what I've seen time and time again. All right. Let's yep. uh, let's wrap this thing up here. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Yep, that felt pretty good. This for sure feels the softest off the face. Yeah. It's not loud and clicky. It isn't. I've noticed it too, audio-wise. It's not. It's it's like still the same thud, but it's just a little bit louder. Like, but the, the pitch of it's not nearly like a hollow body. Yeah. A little higher launch. It's a good ball. A3 oh, too. Good ball, wow. Look at that. That is the closest one to the center line so far. The right, maybe? Stay there, it's fine. That's fine. All right, so Thomas, done with all the testing. Um, you've got the last three irons that you hit in your hand there. Um, and you mentioned uh, after the first four, T200 was kind of the smallest, maybe visually, and you talked about Shirkson having a pretty soft feel as well. So. Got three more here talking about those ones. Yeah, these three we can we can definitely add in the conversation. Um, so speaking of smallest, I guess the the Rogue ST Pro. Yeah. Probably up there, pretty close in the same size okay. to the smallest of the player assistance iron category. They're, they're all shaped differently. I mean, you talk about shape. I five twenty five. It's got those extra grooves. It's yep. a little bit taller. Yeah. Um, just a different kind of look to look down at. Um, you talk about feel. Yeah. Softest. Mizuno Pro 225, yeah, and quietest. Mm -hmm. But then we revert back to the uh, the Rogue ST Pro. That felt the loudest off yeah, the face. Yeah, it was a, definitely a noticeable difference. Well, first when you went to the Pro 225, uh, it was just a softer thud than the rest of them. And then you hit the ping, and then you hit the Callaway uh, Rogue ST Pro, and there was a difference between the ping and the Callaway. Pretty significant. Yeah, just a louder kind of crash sound um, versus the rest. So yeah, it was like a, it was like a crack. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah, yeah it, exactly. It sounded like a metal baseball bat almost <laughs> in a way. Um, but it was, so clearly the difference there, but I think we're gonna get to the, the data here, but the Rogue ST Pro Dispersion has a little bit of a different shape to it than the rest of them here. So um, we'll start with the data here. Um, everything was within 82 and a half to 83 and a half yep. on the uh, club speed, so um, fair and even test there. Look at that, the spin is pretty close overall. Ball speed also pretty close overall. You did, we talked about the Cobra having a little extra jump there, uh, just a higher efficiency than the rest. 
Um, well, I find it amazing. I'm always, I'm always looking at a P790. I'm like trying to yeah. understand when I know their loft on that one, and it's not the lowest loft of right. the seven irons that we hit, yet that spin rate is It stays down. It stays and it, down, and it keeps up mm -hmm. in regards to distance. I'm not saying it keeps up, but it actually might have gone the furthest. No, it doesn't just keep up. It goes yeah. the furthest, um, then it, and further than irons that have lower loft. Um, and so. yeah, other irons have more ball speed right. or yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting club. It's a re probably reason why it's been so successful. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and I, I mean, for a lot of golfers, distance is the name of the game. That's what they're going for. Um, and that's how P790 is, is winning in fittings is with distance, especially for the golfers if that's what they're looking for. Now, of course we know that's not everything a golfer Correct. is looking for. There's golfers looking for something else. Stopping power and consistency yeah. is also another thing to talk right. about. And there's, there's definitely two irons that stand out to me in the height category. And mm -hmm. that was the T200 yeah. and that was the Ping I-525. Yeah. The, the I-525 especially, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of unique how it has that kind of that, that high launch to it. I think, yeah, 16.9, yeah, and when you look at everything else, it's kind of 13, 14, yeah. and then 16.9, and T200 17.1. So yeah, those two definitely, mm -hmm were significantly you know, higher with regards to yeah. the launch angle. Yeah, it's actually interesting to see the wide range of launch. I mean, you got 3.2 total differences in, in launch angle from the highest to lowest here. That's kind of a lot actually for, you know, irons that aren't that much, nearly that much of a difference in their loft, right? Yep. So there's definitely some differences in the way the irons are built to launch the ball a little bit lower or higher. You're seeing a little bit higher with T200 and I-525, and as we go to the height here, or the peak height, you can see kind of a, a similar trend there emerge with you know, the clubs that are going the highest. Um, you know, I-525 reaching 90 feet on average, T200 at 88. Well, it's interesting too, you look at the launch angle. If you look at the lower launch angle clubs, no, you'd think this is gonna make sense, right? Lower launch angle, lower landing angle, and height. We're kind of seeing that across the board. But we've got a range from 13.9 to 17.1. And these are clubs that are separated by about a degree and a half right. of loft. So some of these clubs do launch a little lower. You can see King Tech 13.9, yep. a little lower <laughs> launch angle there. Um, you know, landing angle is going to be a little bit lower. Um, there's an old Pro 225, 14.2. It was actually flying the lowest of them all, 40.5 and height of 75. Yeah. So I mean, I'd be worried if I came in for a fitting and I had this kind of speed and I'm, I'm hovering around about that low 40s with that landing angle. Yeah. You know, we talk about, you know, Ping has a nice retro spec loft. We can always order the lofts a little bit differently. Yeah. Just to help with get that spin rate up right. a little bit. Yeah, and then obviously the sacrifice there will be distance, but for the player that is prioritizing kind of control and at this point, if you're hitting your irons this far, like a seven iron, you probably don't need more distance, right? You're gonna be looking for control, stopping power. Yeah. Um, you know, that type of thing. So um, the other thing too we need to look at is the spin here because there's a very clear outlier, right? We've got everything from 45 to 46 and you got TaylorMade down here, 4167. And we already talked about it a little bit, but just another reason why TaylorMade is so unique with that P790, just really low spin. Mm -hmm. And that's how it's able to run out and get that total distance. Right, yeah, I mean, it, what did it take? 15 yards for that to stop once it hit the ground? Yeah. 180 carry going 195. Yeah, it's. Like I said, it's, it can be a little worrisome depending on the player. Yeah. Now, I'm a golfer that has a relatively shallow attack angle. Yeah. You get a little steeper attack angle, that's probably spin rate is probably going to go up. So it's yeah. going to be good for that type of player. Yeah, right. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the whole reason for fittings is every player's swing is different. And you know, if you come in steep, you actually need less spin, as you were alluding to. And, but there's players like you that maybe don't spin it enough or want more spin. And that's a club that probably won't fit in their bag very well. They're going to have some problems on the course controlling the ball. Uh, so, anything else, Thomas, jump out at you numbers-wise? Otherwise, we can kind of jump over quick to the, what the dispersion map looks like. I mean, they were still workable. Uh, yeah. That was a nice thing there, too. We look, we look at the curve, you know, yeah. you know, by now that I like to draw the ball. We're talking around about 10 to 20 feet of curve per, yeah. per club. So, all these irons, even though they're not full-on blades or cavity backs, you can still work them the direction you want the ball to yeah. work. Yeah, you're definitely a draw player. We saw that ball kind of curve a little bit. So you usually start a little bit right. And then I think on average you ended up a little bit left of the, the center line. So yep. uh, that's what we see with, you know, there's it's probably a greater extent with your players' irons, but it still was evident here um, with these irons. Now, yep. dispersion map. So I know you always say which circle is best. But we've got, and I, I, I alluded to the Rogue ST Pro having a different shape, and that's the one that has a more horizontal look to it. 
Uh, it's interesting how consistent the distance was there with that one. And then, of course, you have some, I guess, left to right dispersions that are really good as well, looking at like I-50, or excuse me, I-525. Um, the uh, Mizuno Pro 225 was pretty darn good too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going it's to be different for every golfer that yeah. come in, but just pay attention to what the circles are like. Uh, just because a, a club's going further or, sh or even straighter, how consistent is that distance? Right. And that's more, more important when you start getting irons in your hand or the yeah. loft's a little bit stronger. Right. Because that, let's just face it, that separation is going to get further apart anytime you have a club with less loft on it. Right. I think it's worth noting, you know, we, we just before this, we did a test with um, muscle back blades. And it's funny to see how quickly that north to south dispersion can grow just because of the build of the club being a little more hollow. Uh, you have kind of that ability to get a, I don't want to say a, you know, a flyer, but you know, the one that jumps, then when yep. you pull one, it goes further. Um, the tendency is much more likely to take place with these irons than say those, those really small compact heads. So yeah, and you see it here. It's the loft which creates the spin. Yeah. So the difference is if you've got a blade, that's, for me, I spin the blade about five, 55 to 6,000. Yeah. When I'm hitting these, I'm spinning them about 41 to 45. Yeah. So we're talking 1,000, 1,200 RPMs of spin difference, Yeah. which is going to equate to once that club face is just a little bit off, it's, like I said, it's going to jump, right. it's going to go further, or yeah. it's going to maybe land and chase out. So that's where the forgiveness comes in, because you might get the ball to go the same distance if you miss hit it, Yeah. but the ones you really crush and pull a little bit, a little close face, that's where you get that flyer. Yeah. And it always seems yeah. to be the hole on the course that is there's way more trouble left uh, than there is right, and you get you know over the green in some bunker or some hazard. So um, that's why the control is important. That's why getting fit is important at second swing if you're going to be in this category. So Thomas, thanks for hitting all the shots today and giving the feedback. I think these are all really good clubs, and they all have their advantages. But again, like I said, player dependency. Uh, we always preach on that, and it's important to get fit at second swing at one of our stores or online through our online fitting and support team. We'll get you set up with the iron set right for your game. So thank you again for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. And then leave us a comment, tell us which one of these irons is right for you.